Welcome to USB Hole, the podcast where we talk out of our asses. I'm Chill. I'm the child. And today we'll be talking about the Enneagram. Did I say that right? I think so. Enneagram? I don't know. We talk out of our asses. We don't look at pronunciations here. Say it a couple more times and it'll definitely sound correct. Enneagram. Enneagram. I think that's correct. (laughs) Um, I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like a personality test, right? Uh, to my knowledge, but you definitely know more about it than I do because I just had to look this stuff up because you told me to. <laughs> well, I realize now, like as we're speaking, that I looked up my own stuff, but I didn't look at the definition of what the Enneagram is or does. So let's search that. Yeah, this is our first um, episode where we had to do some research instead of pulling all information directly from our butt. Because you can't really do that because it's a test. (laughs) So it looks like it's just a system of personality typing. That's basically what I said. So it's like that one thing where you get INTF or whatever the hell the letters are, but different. So, we should probably start by saying what we are. Um, My number was five, and we will go deeper into what these numbers mean and how they relate to us, but for now, five is the investigator, and that was what I got the most of, and then four was a very close second. I don't remember what four was. (laughs) Of course, individualist. The individualist, yeah. So I'm technically a five with a four wing. Okay. I took this test twice because I have test anxiety and I felt like I just chose random answers and I took it again and I got the same thing both times. So apparently I didn't just pick random It's stuff. pretty good. Um, yeah, I um, was the highest in fours and my second highest was the nine. And then when I took it the second time, I was the highest in four, and then my nine and two swapped. So it's pretty much the same results. Um, Four, like I said, that's the individualist. That's how I knew the answer, because that's what I got. So I had to look it up. My least one was a three, and I think yours was two, right? Yeah, my least one was a three, too. That's the achiever. The achiever, success-oriented, pragmatic type, adaptive, excelling, driven, and image conscious. Okay, so... We're apparently not pretty driven. accurate for us <laughs> to uh, to be the complete opposite of that. But that the three also like is more about being in the spotlight and things like that, which is definitely not us. Yeah, I mean we can be driven in some ways, but not in like a technical sense. So I think yeah. that makes sense. All right, well, let's get into it. So the five is the intense cerebral type. They're perceptive, innovative, secretive, and isolated. Um, When I read this, I was like, this sounds like the type that's probably the weirdest. (laughs) Because that sounds kind of like, ooh, you're secretive and isolated. So... Um, The description of it, it says, fives are alert, insightful, and curious. They're able to concentrate and focus on developing complex ideas and skills. Independent, innovative, and inventive, they can also become preoccupied with their thoughts in imaginary constructs. So this is the most me thing I have ever read in my life. Um... I am very independent. As I've said before on this podcast, I don't like rules and I don't like people telling me what to do. Um, Not really rules, just more like don't tell me what to do. So um, very independent, high, strong and intense, 100 percent. They become detached. Yep. They typically have problems with. Oh, I can't say this word. I should have practiced this before we did this eccentricity that's the word nihilism and isolation at their best visionary pioneers often ahead of their time and able to see the world in an entirely new way 
So, like I said, probably the weirdest one because it said eccentric. Still can't say that word. Um, nihilism, 100%. I don't know. You know me, so does this sound like me? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually curious to know if you read any of these before you did the test because the description of this, like just that short, like forward description before you click to even like go into it more is like you in a nutshell. <laughs> Like, like before we don't even, you even need to get go into further. the End breakdown. Of podcast, the yeah. end. <laughs> that's that's you. No, I haven't read any of these, and I have before. Like, I've taken this probably four times because I don't remember anything ever. Um, so it's it's yeah. new to me every time I take it. <laughs> so I didn't realize. I didn't look through. Like I haven't looked through any of the other ones either. But when I read that, I was like. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. I um uh, I read like after I did the test, I read mine, I read yours, and then I read like the opposite of me and then like the one like my second highest number, but I didn't really read all the ones in the middle because I mean, you know me, I can't get through reading like one thing. I have a really short attention span, so I couldn't get too far into it. I also think it doesn't um, matter because they were so I mean, for both of us, we were pretty similar on the top and the bottom. So I think in regards to what we're doing, those ones don't matter. Yeah, the stuff in the middle is just obsolete. Yeah. Um, um, I scored high scores, the individualist. Um, Sorry if you're on the video version, I'm going to read this. I'm not going to be looking at the screen. Um, The quick description is sensitive, introspective type, expressive, dramatic, self-absorbed, and temperamental. So when I first read that, I was like, what the fuck? That is not me. I'm not self-absorbed. But then, like, as I read more into it, it's not self-absorbed in, like, a, the world revolves around me kind of way. It's, you know, it's a little bit different than that. But temperamental, yeah, that's definitely me. Um, I have a temper tantrum, but I'll get over it pretty quickly. Um, fours are self-aware, sensitive, and reserved. They're emotionally honest, creative, and personal but can also be moody and self-conscious that boom done. We don't like end of story as well. You know, withholding themselves from others due to feeling vulnerable and defective. They can also feel disdainful and exempt from ordinary ways of living. Um, they typically have problems with melancholy, self-indulgence, <laughs> self-indulgence and self-pity. Like this is literally like if you put my face in the dictionary and then like a description of my face or i guess in, no like in an encyclopedia like this would all be listed under me so i'm like as much as i don't really like believe in these like personality tests and like all this kind of stuff i'm like this is pretty spot on for like the main description of a four um like when we go into it a little bit more there's some other stuff that i just i don't really so much associate with but um, i mean it's backed by science it's it's more than just like going to buzzfeed and seeing oh which type are you (laughs) what kind of cracker are you yeah it's more like this has been it's more of an average of everybody yeah um i don't know so i i don't know i put down like some key points that like really stick with me and then things that don't but you want to go over a little more years first and then can go over that yeah i mean i just wrote down i just copied and pasted from the website but the basic fear is being useless helpless or incapable i am terrified of not being able to find a solution to things and it makes me want to ball up and cry you know how sometimes people get really frustrated and it makes them cry and it's like now you're gonna think i'm a big baby but i'm frustrated i'm not sad i'm not mad well i'm mad but that's what happens to me so pretty much anytime something is overwhelming that i can't figure out on my own i instead of asking for help or any of that i just go into uh fight or flight mode and i choose flight and i go lay down and cry so (laughs) 
the biggest fear being useless, helpless, or incapable is 100% me. Mm -hmm. I don't like being useless. Like, I even told you, in an emergency, I'm useless because I just, like, freak out. I, if I don't know what to do, that is. Yeah. Like, well, I will just shut down you. and cry. <laughs> well, that's where my nine and two come in and, and they'll take care of you. <laughs> Which was my backup was the not like the nine and two, which like the peacemaker and the like the two is like super caring and like all that shit. Or I just like swoop in and take care of you so you don't have to worry about yourself when you shut down. Yeah, where I'm the opposite and I'll shut down or I'll start freaking out. There's no in between. Which yeah. is a <laughs> terrible response to anything. <laughs> and yep, I cannot kind help of. it. Hey, so, I mean, yeah. No, what were you going to say? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a personality thing. I mean, yeah, it might be kind of terrible and it's not helpful in a situation, but it doesn't make you, like, any less you or important. But evolutionary, you know? I should be able to handle these type of things. Yeah. <laughs> someone, someone else would be there to keep you from dying. Like, what did our ancestors train for? <laughs> For me to sit there and cry because I'm frustrated. That sounds like a total like teenager who is just throwing a tantrum type thing. I do the same thing. Like if I'm very frustrated, I will also cry, but I don't have like a stop situation. I will keep doing what I'm doing and cry the whole time. Where I didn't Where, explain that yeah. my my brain shuts down. Yeah. Like, I cannot physically think anymore. Like, even if I could probably sit there and calmly figure it out, my brain will not let me. And that seems yeah. like the opposite of evolution. Like, oh, you're just going to die because you can't figure things out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know you, like, a lot of times you'll have to just basically stop what you're doing and go lay down for a little bit and, like, regroup or whatnot. Or and I'm more, like, I have to just keep going and... Like, I can't disappoint anyone by stopping what I'm doing. So I just have to muscle through while crying and being pissed off. Well, that's the thing. If someone else is relying on me, I can usually, I can usually complete the task. Because I'm trying not to, and it even said in the personality thing, I'm trying not to upset other people. Like, I'm trying not to disappoint people, but I still have to do it internally without help. And if I physically can't, then we're all screwed. <laughs> Which seems like a totally bad thing. And it's, there's only so many hours in the day. I can't just keep going and laying down and trying to think it through by fucking off. I don't know. It's, it doesn't work and probably need help, but that's okay. I can't ask for help. <laughs> Part That's of your yeah. number five personality. So our basic desire is to be capable and competent, which is basically what I just went through. Um, and then I said I also had a four wing. So when you do the test, it shows you like a number like out of a hundred, I guess it was. I didn't really look that deep into it, but my five was a 98 and my four was a 95. So those are very close together. So I'm technically a five with a four wing. And here's the lovely small paragraph about that. Uh, the people who are five with a four wing have a more fragile emotional balance as compared to its core. When they come across difficulties in life, they compartmentalize their problem and solve them intellectually. This is a mechanism of defense in which one removes himself emotionally from the stressors. So I guess technically what I'm doing is a defense mechanism. When I go retreat. To, yeah, keep away from the stress. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't read these before we did this, so we're all learning oh. together. My, uh, the number four basic fear is that they have no identity or personal significance. That tracks. Um. <laughs> the problem is this stuff is so dead on that I like don't have response. Like I have no rebuttal because I'm like, yeah, a hundred percent. Like I, but in some cases, no, because so like a lot of the times, like my inner self is like, hey, um, 
like you just lost in the crowd. I think in another episode I said something about oh the in if I wanted to be invisible, well I feel invisible all the time anyway. So you know that's right there. Like I have no no identity or you know uh, the basic desire is to find themselves and their significance to create their identity. I mean I don't feel like that though. I feel that like, that could go for almost anybody. Yeah, like I don't feel a desire to be like, oh, I need to find myself. I don't know, I'm just kind of like flowing through space. And I'm like, you know, but, mayo, mayo, but. Think about the sexuality podcast we did. I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess like in some ways, like that that would apply. I just don't think that like a large, this is like a basic desire. I don't, I don't feel like I'm constantly trying to like, find myself it's not like, in the I'm forefront content. of your mind yeah i'm content with with not finding myself <laughs> me too like i would almost <laughs> rather not find myself thank you Th- that goes back to us being complete opposites of number three and not being driven i'm not driven to find myself like i'm cool like just like yeah this. you can go um, find me for me i don't like you do that yeah. i don't i don't do decisions so yeah, I didn't understand the wing thing, so I don't know what my wing is. Um, um yours so was super get that close. Far. I don't know if it's considered a wing if they're not like super close to each other. My sizes or whatever. Yeah, like my four and my five were only three apart. Yeah, I did it on my phone, so I couldn't hover over the things to get the number. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I did it. Um, When I tried to go back in on the computer, it was like, no, dude, you can't do this. You already did this test. You can't send this to somebody. Yeah, Yeah, and then when I redid it, obviously I didn't remember my answer, so I didn't get the same score. Um, So it was a little different. So I don't know what my wing is. Sorry. I like the the name of my wing. It's called the Iconoclast. Nice. That just Um, sounds like a superhero. I I do feel like me not following through also track and um, stays true to the podcast. We didn't want to be too. I didn't want to be too prepared. Yeah. So now we're just confused. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't prepare for a podcast that's like scientific and probably needs research because we suck. Pride. I'm gonna say honestly, I put in about eighty percent effort into preparing. I will tell you, I honestly, I know I didn't put in a hundred percent. I definitely could have done more. And I even had a little bit of fair time where I could have done it, but I did (laughs) it. Yeah. Same. I went to enneagraminstitute.com and just copied and pasted everything I saw into a (laughs) word document. And here we are. But if you would have written it down, you could have practiced your cursive handwriting. That's all I'm saying. I don't know if I know how to do cursive anymore. It's been years. No. Uh Oh, I use it a lot at work. But um, when we were uh, starting before we started recording and we got the call up so we could chit chat beforehand, I was trying to show Sarah my notes and I couldn't stop laughing for no reason about because how she did the alphabet. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why it was so funny, but um, like, do I yeah. say that word weird alphabet? Um, well, it's B E T, and I feel like you're pronouncing it B I T. No, alphabet. Yeah, no, you're cool now. The first time it sounded like you said alphabet. I think I just said it fast. Maybe. I thought the beginning sounded weird. Anyway, um, uh, no, so cool. my wing, I'll I'll share the five with wing four, and then just go back to five because. I think I'm more of a five than a four, definitely, and it said I was so. But a five with wing four can be described as someone who has traits of a type five, like curiosity and and, why are there so many words I can't pronounce? Inquisitiveness, as well as some traits like the type four that have an artistic leaning and need to make a mark in the world in some way. The five with four wing is quite rare, and the description for this personality is that of an introvert. Um, The iconoclast may have difficulty dealing with people and staying grounded. So this thing is basically, it's writing my biography. (laughs) 
I have He's never heard. An introvert. I don't. I wouldn't say you have a, a problem staying grounded. Um, I don't really I know the, what that means. I think that's the first thing you've said that I don't think really describes you. Um, I would say you're pretty humble. I was gonna say, is that like humble? Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of a dick. Are you sure? Similar to that. Um, but being a dick and being humble, like you can be both. <laughs> I could be a humble um, dick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Like you know where you came from, <laughs> and so um, you don't try to be something you're not. Is how I would like layman's term, like staying grounded. I don't know. I don't know. You get me. You That's get not me. definition, but but um. Yeah, I get that. I guess, but unless they mean it in a different sense, but that's the way I've always heard of it. But I definitely, so I've taken, I do go to the BuzzFeed and take those quizzes because I'm lazy and have no life. So <laughs> every time I take one of those quizzes, and I know they're bullshit made up by BuzzFeed writers, whatever. But every time I take a quiz that says like, what, what career should you do? What major should you major in? Even if it's not BuzzFeed, like anything, it always says something artistic which is funny to me because I don't think I have an artistic bone in my body, but apparently this four winger has like traits of artistic ability. And I don't understand like creativity, which I think I have 0% of. Um, I think you're looking at, at artistic, like art in a, like too confined sense. No, so because like being creative, I understand. No, I understand, like, artists in general, you think of, like, painters and people making sculptures and stuff. I'm not thinking like that. I'm thinking just any creative type. I have nothing. You, like, single-handedly created and, like, designed this podcast and then, like, make topics and tell me what to do every week. Like, that's creative. But it's not good. Yes, it is. <laughs> we have some listeners uh sponsor us <laughs> <laughs> um no i yeah i don't know I, I don't think that i would say it's like your number one personality but you you are creative you have a lot of ideas i just think it's weird that every single career aptitude type test or like what should you major in type test every single one says art and then like a secondary is business which is what i actually majored in well, because secretly, deep down, subconsciously, you're meant to do creative things, which is why I think, like, why you're trying to get into the entertainment industry, because you're creative. Hey, creatives, hire me. I don't know how yeah. to do anything, but I can learn. Chill co content creator over here. That's the word they're using these days, right? To all 12 of our listeners, hey. Hey. <laughs> If you are listening, let me let me do a plug real fast. Hit us up on okay. Twitter at Chill and Child. Let us know if you've ever taken the Enneagram test, what your number is, how you compare to it, um, anything else you want to tell us, even if it's that we're not funny. This episode's not funny, but you know what I mean. Um, hit us up on Twitter at Chill and Child or any of our other socials. Socials. Show, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> I told you I had a giggle left in me. Um, <laughs> check out our link tree. It has all of the links. Sarah did all that. She does all of the work. And I just show up and record and then tweet. You make promos. Oh, yeah. I make promos sometimes. They're good. Thanks. I like them. <laughs> At least um, you like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on TikTok and watch them and then actually press like because no one does that. <laughs> Please. This is just yep. going to be us begging and pleading for people <laughs> to come watch us. This is the self-depreciation podcast. This isn't the Enneagram. This is just us begging yeah. for mercy because we're humble. It, yeah. It, it leads into uh, the description of a four and how I seek approval. Mm. Go for it. I seek your approval. 
That's what I'm saying from the listeners. I seek their approval. I want to say I don't seek approval, but I definitely am not going to deny getting approval. There's a difference between, like, I seek approval by how many people watch this and how many people, I mean, just anything I do, but this is all I'm doing right now. So this specifically, like, how many people watch, how many people listen like analytics, which makes sense because Mm -hmm. I have a degree in that, but I don't like people praising me out loud or in person or like personally, like, don't tell me I'm doing a good job because that makes me want to throw up. (laughs) I don't like being praised. I don't know why. I like, I think I kind of feel the same about that. Like I like, um I like getting it or like I like seeing approval but I don't like it physically coming to me like um for example that award let me be humble that award that my business just won I was like excited to be like oh look I won this award that's awesome and like share it with my friends and family but every time somebody says congratulations to me I'm Ew. like Ew. Yeah, exactly <laughs> It's like, show me, show me that you care about me by voting or by watching or like, let me see that my, let me see that my actions are actually having consequences. I don't need praise. That doesn't pay the bills. (laughs) Give me your praise in the form of a vote or, um, you know, yeah, money's good too. Like I, I met some friends out last night and when I got there or, you know, we did our hugs, our hellos, whatever. And the first thing out of the one lady's mouth is, oh, congratulations. How you been? I'm like, no, Gross. <laughs> I don't want to answer the how you been question. And I don't want to talk about the award. Just you already said on like the internet, on, on the socials, like, hey, good job to the business. Like, I'm cool with that. I don't need it. And that's why when I see things like that posted, and I'm pretty sure I did it to your post, I just heart it or like it or hit the care button because I, I myself don't like it. So I don't do it to other people. And I don't think it's because I can't take compliments. I don't think that's the problem, but I also don't have another excuse for it. I think if we're going off Enneagrams, if we go back to the, scoring the lowest on the three you don't want to be the center of attention and that praise and that spotlight makes you uncomfortable and that's not what you're seeking so the more that people do it the harder it is on you and you don't want to be a part of that but I mean it happens I think personally for me yeah I think it happens though like even if it's just one-on-one with my boss and stuff it makes me super uncomfortable even if we're not face to face He'll just go on and on, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, but he's the type of person who goes on and on, and I'm, like, please, sitting there, like, crying, like, please stop. <laughs> I can't take this. It's making me so uncomfortable. Oh. I don't know why. That would be horrible, especially if you were, like, face-to-face. Yeah, it's usually on the phone, but, I mean, we used to be in office oh, together, yeah. so it was face-to-face, and I would just sit there staring at him, like, what do I say? Thank you? I don't... Okay. Yeah. And then, like, you don't want to hurt their yeah. feelings and be like, okay, shut it. Please but, stop. Like, that's how you feel, kind of? Like, just yes. please. Yeah. Well, this... I have that problem... No, Sorry, go, go for it, because I was going to go into something else. Okay. I have that problem, like, at work if a customer picks up something and they make a comment about how they like it or like go on about it or whatever trying to be vague about work but um I at the same time you know like you try to be nice and be like oh thank you but like also sometimes I just want to be like yeah I know (laughs) like oh this is beautiful well duh I don't need you to tell me that it looks good I already know it looks good or I wouldn't be selling it you know what I mean yeah like if it looked Um, bad it wouldn't be in your hand right now (laughs) Yeah. Um, and you can't say that to a customer. So I think that like that, I don't know, that kind of does not go at all with the, the Enneagram for like to want to have that response. Well, are we self-absorbed? Um, uh, the Enneagram four is. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Well, both of us are basically fours because my four was as high as my five. So maybe we just, you're telling us something we already know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's uncomfortable because it's like, okay, 
I get it. Let's go. Yeah. Like, how am I um, seeking your approval and um, hating everything about myself and thinking I'm not good enough, but at the same time, I'm so self-absorbed that I don't need you to tell me that I did a good job because I already fucking yeah. know I did a good job? It's like, how both of those things at the exact same time? Yeah, because if there's something that I'm doing and I did it well and I did it right, it's like, well, no shit. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't need praise. I'm just doing what yeah. I'm supposed to be doing. I think it's more, I get more uncomfortable when I think I don't deserve it. Which I think anybody would, but I'm uncomfortable either way. So just don't praise me, please. A- anyone. <laughs> I mean, tell us the podcast is good because I also want to hear that, but also don't. <laughs> tell us it's good by giving it five stars on Apple and Spotify and liking the YouTube the videos. Stars a thing. And... Oh, yes. I didn't know they had ratings. You can rate. Yeah, you can rate podcasts. What the hell? Has no one rated our podcast? Yeah, yeah there's two ratings oh, on shit. there. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think you have to go on to actual Apple. You might not be able to do it from our platform where we post them. This um, is why we're not driven, yeah. because I didn't even notice that we have ratings. <laughs> so, hey, welcome yeah. to a podcast. And, yeah. Also, if you want to, like, live tweet us as you listen, that'd be pretty dope, that is too. Dope. At Chillin' Child. And we'll respond to you. We respond, guys. Your favorite content creators, they if respond. I notice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sarah doesn't check the notifications. Tonight. I don't because I have my own on my phone, but I have all the chill and child stuff on my desktop. So I don't get notifications on my desktop. So I'm just like, oh shit, someone did something like five days ago. Sorry. Well, also, um, if you hit up chill and child and Sarah doesn't respond, you can also hit me up at the child official. Um, and I will respond because I do get notifications for the child official. I don't get them on my personal account because I don't give a shit, but I care what you guys have to say. So I will respond. You can tag me. I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. The people with Enneagram type five may encounter a fear that they are left with not enough internal strength to face difficulties of life. So they'll back off, go back in search of the mental peace, safety, and security. Well, they're where they'll prepare themselves mentally to emerge as strong candidates. So that makes me feel better about retreating. Because I know if you're going through a lot, you should probably sit down and mentally recoup and everything like that. But I feel like I do it more often than not. Just because I'm stressed all the time. (laughs) But it makes me feel better that it kind of says it's for the mental peace, safety, and security where they'll prepare themselves to mentally emerge. That's totally what I'm doing. I mean, I'm trying to rebuild, because like we said in the beginning, I'm an introvert. So if there's a social situation that I'm a part of, I have to do the same thing. Or like there's a lot of people I'm dealing with, or I'm in a situation where I can't get out of it and I feel trapped having that mental break does absolutely recharge my mental health. So I guess doing it, maybe I probably shouldn't do it as often as I should and just deal with some more things head on, but it's not the end of the world. And I think it does help in the long run. Um, Do you have um, ones that you didn't agree with about the the description or did everything pretty much pan out for you i'm trying to read through it sorry if there's dead air i can remove that in editing no one will know except i just yeah. said it um, but you can also <laughs> remove that in editing and you nah, can remove this nah that's fun <laughs> um these people are sometimes scientifically inclined i don't know if i agree with that i guess technically this isn't beer by the way technically <laughs> Um, my degree is kind of scientifically inclined because it's data analytics. So I think data hypothesis, 
data collecting, that's kind of scientifically inclined. But I think in the the regular instance of science that you hear about biology, chemistry, uh, I was good at that too. <laughs> I just I just didn't make it any main focus. I didn't care about science. I don't know. How do you interpret that? Uh, I don't I don't really know. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Well, no, like I don't know, I'm, try, I'm trying to think about it. Like I, I don't know. I'm having a problem where I don't want um, to sound like a complete fucking moron because <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, you mean this but whole podcast the, for me? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, but so, like, I don't know because some of the stuff, like, if I'm not understanding or like misinterpreting it, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the talking out of our asses part of this podcast, yes. at least. The interpretation. We're, I mean, we did yeah. research to find out specifics because we can't just make up stuff about a five or a four. But right. I think interpretation of it could be left up to the in individual. I mean, yeah, like data analysis and stuff like that. That's definitely scientific. So that is kind of what you do or what you went to school for and everything. So I, that does track back to being scientific. I don't think it has to be like data and numbers is science and that's math true. and math is science. So that's true. That's why, like when I said earlier, art isn't just painting and sculpting art is way more than that. I guess that works for science too. Um, yeah. I think this next paragraph might, might be a little not me, but also me. So it says, the people of this type are non-intrusive, independent, shy, and reluctant to ask for a favor for the assistance. Who wrote this? <laughs> I'm having a problem reading this. You get the picture. Independent, non-intrusive, shy, reluctant. Um, That's you, 100%. I don't think, I don't think I'm not intrusive. I think I'm extremely intrusive. Really? Yeah. Unless I'm thinking of the wrong, see, I'm just going to sound stupid this whole okay, fucking so episode. Actually, I would say that I don't think that you're shy. You are a little like, um, you're introverted, but you're not shy. But the intrusive thing, I don't, I mean, there are things where you're going to be like a little more heavy handed and force somebody to say something or um, get more information in a topic or a conversation. But I don't think that you're intrusive in the sense of like, I need to be all up in your business and know what's going I on do. about everything all the time. You do? I think okay, I'm well, a I missed nosy that about bitch. you. <laughs> yeah. Um. I also think I'm a dick, like I said at the beginning here, so that also plays into it. So the definition of intrusive it's giving me is causing disrupt... I need to go back to school. Causing disruption or annoyance through being unwelcome or uninvited. I think in general, that's not me. Like, I don't go anywhere I'm not invited in person. Come at me online, though. And I will be all up in your shit. So why I think this is kind of not me is because I like to start shit, but I don't like to finish shit. Oh, really? Yeah. So like, get me riled up and I will start shit, but then I will get bored of it really quickly or <laughs> I will get so mad that I don't want to think about it anymore. I'll go lay in my bed and not think about it. And so I won't finish it, but See, I will start shit all day. That's funny because I don't like to start shit, but I like to finish it. That's why we work like the, together so well. Yeah. Like the other day on Twitter, um, that one person who was running their mouth and deciding that they needed to advocate for people who didn't ask for it. And I'm like, hold on, let me get in here. <laughs> and I disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me take care of this bitch real fast. <laughs> I mean, I did end up saying something only because I was like, I don't want the child to be fighting all my battles here. Um, but <laughs> out of text, that sounds hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Children fight in battles. Yeah. Um, so I did say something, but it definitely was not as long as what you said. Yeah. But I mean, 
I, I will. <laughs> I will. Um, like I'll come in there and end it, but I'm gonna try to do it in a nice way, unless I'm like super pissed off, and then I'm gonna oh, just yeah. be like, "Listen, fuck off." On the internet, I definitely will do stuff a little. Like I'll choose my words wisely, but like in person, if somebody is like, if if that would have been like the three of us in the situation, and that person was there, and like I would just shut it down in a completely different way. Oh, me too. But the internet's yeah. in writing, so like, yeah, you got like there's so words. much. Yeah, everything's open to interpretation, and then you become the asshole when the other person was being the dick to begin with. Yeah, and I mean, the person wasn't being mean in a sense to where they were calling us names or anything, so I wasn't yeah. also going to say stuff like that back. Right, yeah. I mean, you just kind of match the tone. Yeah. And then just leave them apologizing at the end. Yeah. And then you just say, all good, because you're tired of fighting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Wait. Also, there's this other thing that I don't think relates to me. It says these people are afraid of breach of privacy, and are afraid of an intrusion. So you're not intrusive, and you're also afraid of an intrusion. I don't think I'm afraid of breach of privacy. I probably shouldn't say this on the internet, but I never change my passwords when they tell me to. Um, I don't know if that's what this means. <laughs> I mean, it probably means personal privacy, but I am an open book. I will tell you almost anything you want to know except my address. Like, yeah, I think that's complete bullshit. Also, knowing knowing you and knowing your outward appearance and the way you are on the internet and stuff too, I feel like that doesn't track. No. Yeah. So there's definitely. I mean. I feel like a lot of the five really resonates with you and your personality, but there's just a few things that haven't. Yeah, I feel so. like I won't tell anybody anything about someone else, but if you ask me anything about me, you don't even have to ask me. I will just tell you. <laughs> I will just <laughs> offer up the, stories. Like, I do not give a shit. That's your four coming into play. Did you know that? Oh, really? No. Tell me. Yeah. Um, oh, let me try, let me find this part. I had so much on the five. I didn't deep dive into the four. I didn't want this to go for three hours. Yeah. Um, well, crap. I don't see that. But basically, there was a pretty big section um, of the four that said, like, essentially the same thing. You're an open book. Like, you will willingly overshare all of the things about you and your personality. Um, to other people, whether you ask or ask for it or not, but um, it kind of explains it as, I wish I could find this part so I, I could read it more scientifically. It explained it essentially that you do that to seek, like, a, like not approval, but, like, to learn about yourself. So, like, you give all this information to, like, reflect back on yourself and change. And I was like, mm, that's not, like, not the reason that I do it. I feel like I just do it because I have diarrhea of the mouth. And for and, like, comedy. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely for comedy. But, um, but yeah, it does say that's one of the things about a four is that they will overshare. Gosh, I wish I could find I can, this part. I can understand what they're saying because a lot of it is about coming on too strong, maybe. And... Mm -hmm like trying to find connections even though people don't probably like the mouth diarrhea but we just can't help it yeah okay so this says healthy forms are honest with themselves they own all their feelings and can look at their motives contradictions and emotional conflicts without denying or whitewashing them they may not necessarily like what they discover but they do not try to rationalize their state nor do they try to hide them from themselves or others they are not afraid to see themselves warts and all. Healthy fours are willing to reveal highly personal and potentially shameful things about themselves because they are determined to understand the truth of their experience so that they can discover who they are and come to terms with their emotional history. This ability also enables fours to endure suffering with a quiet strength. So, yeah, basically I dumped it down. Yeah, I don't um, think that applies to us. I think we're more trying to well, besides the comedy thing, it's more of, like, mm -hmm. trying to find a connection. Yeah, I'm not doing it to, like, learn about myself. I know I'm uh, a piece of shit. We're already past that. 
<laughs> yeah, I did. I do my learning as my shitty things happen. Um, but yeah, this the part about uh, suffering with quiet strength, like that does apply to me because a lot of times, like, I will overshare about things, but when it's like tough situations that I'm going through, like those aren't things that I'm sharing with people. Those are things that I'm internalizing and keeping to myself. And like I said before, like when I'm angry and I cry and I just keep going, even though I'm crying because I'm angry, if I'm crying because I'm sad, I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, yeah. I'm just going to keep it to myself and keep going. Um, I mean, there but, are some times when I have yeah. issues and you ask me about it and I just move on because I don't want to talk about it. Like, yeah, I'm just internalizing it and I'm not ready to put it out there yet but like yeah other things it's like the dumbest yeah. shit or shit no one wants to know about i will tell you yeah like so, some things you'll just be like oh by the way and then you tell me like this four paragraph story about some dumb shit like with ridiculous amount of details about something that happened in your past or whatever but then like today you were having a hard time with something and i'm like what's wrong like are you okay? What's going on? And you're just like, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so like that that was a big, uh, I think a big four thing coming in with it being so close to you and your five and yeah. four. Yeah. What else um, is there about fours? Um, well, so like this was like, um, Fours maintain their identity by seeing themselves as fundamentally different from others. Fours feel that they're unlike other human beings, and consequently, that no one can understand them or love them adequately. They often see themselves as uniquely talented, possessing special one-of-a-kind gifts, but also as uniquely disadvantaged or flawed. So this sentence, or not sentence, a couple sentences. So... I'm reading this and then I'm like, okay, so I'm a four and I kind of travel with a lot of this stuff, but it's like their main identity is seeing themselves as different from everyone else. I'm like, no, I don't really see that about myself. But then I'm like thinking more into it and how I'm like trying to find the things about the fours that don't resonate with my personality. And I feel like by doing that, I'm inherently going back to this thing that they're saying where like, I'm trying so hard to not even be a four, like, don't you dare make me a four. I'm nothing like the fours. So I kind of feel like that. Box. Yeah, like that went, which you know me, like I'm 100% like, don't give me a label. I don't need this. I don't need that. I'm just me. And that's like essentially what this is saying. So like while I'm trying to combat this sentence, I'm essentially making it true. Yeah, but I don't think, I don't think you're overtly like that though. I think there's a few things to where it's kind of like a subtle thing, but I feel like a lot of people are like that. Like, I'm going to obviously have thoughts about who I am and what kind of box I fit into. That's just, that's just human introspection. Yeah. So I don't think it, cause it sounds like they're saying fours are overtly like this, like, you can't tell them anything else, and I don't think you're like that. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> that wasn't a compliment. Um, We're not trying to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so I, another thing, it says, um, nevertheless, fours often feel, nope, sorry, wrong sentence. Fours often report that they feel they are missing something in themselves, although they may have difficulty identifying exactly what that something is. Um, is it willpower, social ease, self-confidence, emotional tranquility, all of these they see in others, seemingly in abundance, given time and sufficient perspective, force generally recognize that they are unsure about aspects of their self-image, their personality, or ego structure itself. They can lack a clear and stable identity, particularly a social persona that they feel comfortable with. So, like, the first part of this, yeah, I always feel like, something's missing or whatever but i know that it's a lack of self-confidence like i don't need all these other things to try to figure that out i don't have self-confidence at all um so again it's like slightly applies but then like the rest of it i feel like really doesn't um it's all kind of saying this, the same thing in the end yeah this one um i think this one tracks for me in the course of their lives, fours may try several different identities on for size, basing them on styles, 
preferences or qualities that they find attractive in others, but underneath the surface, they still feel uncertain about who they really are. The problem that they base their identity largely on their feelings. So I'm not going to say my identity changes because like at the root of it, I've always still been the same person with the same like values, but I definitely go through transitional periods where my outward appearance obviously changes drastically. Um, my interests at the time, like I will become self-absorbed into a specific interest and like that will become my personality for a while, um, which is part of the fact that again, this um, fours have highly addictive personalities, which is 100% me. Like if I find something that I like, like it consumes my life. And you definitely know this with two huge things that have consumed my life. Well, like, obviously the whole mythical world, but, like, the current obsession that I have in life, but we're not going to talk about that one. Um, but, that, like, you know just from, like, the time that we've known each other that this is this is me. Um, 100%. Like, it, I will, like, change my, not intentionally change my personality, but, like, whatever I'm into at the time becomes more of what I am or what I'm doing. Um, but, like, the creativity, all that stuff totally tracks. Um, I was trying to find the ones that didn't fit, but um Yeah, that explanation of a four also tracks with me, seeing as I'm so yeah. close to having a four as well. So it seems like the most extreme stuff of a four is also me. Yeah. I'm just a mess. Yeah. You're like almost spot on five. There's some like heavy things in the four that definitely flow over into your five. Yeah, the hyperfixation is real. Yeah. Um, the type for the levels of development, so like the um, healthy levels, did you read that for yours, the five? I don't think so. Like at their best. So like a type four at their best is profoundly creative, expressing the personal and universal possibly, or, yeah, that's, that's not a sentence. Profoundly creative, expressing the personal and universal possibly in a work of art. That's, this is not grammatically correct. That's going to bother me. I told um, you some of them were really bad. <laughs> inspired, self-renewing, regenerating, able to transform all of their experiences into something valuable or self-creative. So I'm clearly not at my best because most of that is not me. Um, I would say I, I, in an attempt to not sound um, full of myself, I would say that I'm profoundly creative um, in a lot of different aspects. I mean, like, obviously, what I do for a living requires a lot of creativity. Um, my, you know, some other creative things that I do, very artsy, artsy fartsy. Um, she does the promos. Yeah. <laughs> I like to do edit. I like to make really stupid, um, funny photos. Then, uh, period. <laughs> I can't even say it. Remember when I, I made, I tried to say, guy. Pietti or whatever the hell his name is, but I spelled it like Pierre Walker. <laughs> that was like one of my best, like quick comeback art things. But anyway, and may, also well, one of my best jokes. Yeah, that was a really good joke too. I wonder. If, I don't know if we have a screenshot of the conversation, but I do have an image um, of the the thing that I made. Which, since technically I merged the two things together, I don't think it's like copying a brand because it's partially covered but either way maybe we'll put that i'll put it in the promo for you guys um or we'll just put it on twitter we'll put it on twitter because i don't think it'll fit into the promo i don't know what i want to do for the promo yet probably not this we'll edit this out <laughs> nope i'll put <laughs> i'll put the image on um i'll put it on at the child official i'll put it on that twitter so you guys can see it um so anyway the fours at their lowest um, like the unhealthy levels, the level nine, despairing, feel hopeless, become self-destructive, possibly abusing alcohol or drugs to escape, an extreme emotional breakdown, suicide is likely, uh, generally corresponds to the avoidant, depressive, and narcissistic personality disorder. Um, this, this is, is so me. depressing. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, so this level nine, this is at its lowest. This has been me in my life. This is not me currently. But this was me for a long period of my life. I do, you know, I have, um, you know, moments where I feel so, like hopeless and things like that, but in and out with depression or whatever. But the becoming self-destructive 
um, like that, that is my go-to coping me mechanism. When something goes wrong and I can't handle it, that's what I do. I just spiral and I will self-sabotage myself like crazy. Um, there was a period in my life where drugs and alcohol were the only thing that could get me through. And so this, like this definitely tracks. I, if this four is me, I never want to be at level nine again. And if you are a four and you're sitting at a level nine, I, I feel so much for you. Yeah. Cause I definitely you. feel like this four tracks for me as well, but I don't think I've ever hit a level nine yet well i hope that you don't i hope so because too but i've been self-destructive but i've never been so self-destructive that it like ruined my life yeah i didn't hit rock bottom good i'm glad and now i'm gonna keep you from getting there <laughs> if it's so, this podcast or if it's outside this podcast uh, and then obviously there's like different levels in between and i'm sure that everyone's bottom level is is pretty heavy i didn't look at all the bottom levels for the for the other numbers um but i saw this level nine and i was like damn like that is me in 2005 and that is me in 2000 so um tell us what the high level um high level five is i didn't look that far i didn't realize that that went down that far so i'm finding it now oh i found it okay. okay um seeking oblivion they may commit suicide or have a psychotic break with reality deranged explosive self-destructive with schizophrenic overtones generally corresponds to the schizoid avoidant and schizotypical personality disorders well fuck but that was the level nine because I asked you to read the level one. Oh yeah, that <laughs> if that's the level, level one. You're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> if that's at your best, <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> you pulled me. And you only heard half of it. <laughs> the level nine is literally hell. <laughs> oh god. Well, let's talk about level nine for a second because that tracks like when i am at high levels of stress i think i have schizophrenia and like i'm not saying that to make fun of that disease like i get audio hallucinations and i can hear things that aren't there when i get a high level of stress so that tracks because it says psychotic break with reality i mean that's that's what happens so I don't know if I've technically been as far as a level nine, but definitely up there. So level one, <laughs> um, become visionaries, broadly comprehending the world while penetrating it profoundly. That's what she said. Open-minded, take things in whole in their true context, making, make pioneering discoveries and find entirely new ways of doing and perceiving things. So basically being an innovator. That's not your best. Yeah. And penetrating. I wonder if maybe we should have, instead of focusing like on the best and the worst, like in the middle of the run. We probably average. should have found where we actually we, are. <laughs> yeah. I didn't read all of them. It's true. So I don't, since I didn't read all of them, I can't say how well it tracks with the personality and the test, but for myself, if I take the time to read stuff, I'm going to, like, my mind will be like, oh, yeah, that's me. Or, no, that's not me. You know, we'll, like, just pick which one it wants me to be rather than me reading them and then deciphering which one is me. I will just be like, yeah, this one's me. And, oh, no, this one's me. And then I'll get to the next one and that will also be me, you know. What um, do you think I'm doing right me. now? As I'm <laughs> reading six, five, and four, I'm like, oh, that one's me. No, wait, that what? one's me. Oh, that one's me. Yeah. Or so like shit. somewhere in the middle, at least like six, five, four, like that's like in the center. You're somewhere in the average. Yeah, but five doesn't sound good, but it's totally me. It says increasingly detached as they become involved with complicated ideas or imaginary worlds, become preoccupied with their visions and interpretations rather than reality. That's a hundred percent me. Like I will go if I am like if I can't figure stuff out and I'm going over to 
like mentally recharge, I am going off into fantasy land. And at this point where I am right now, fantasy is taking over reality. So that's kind of messed up, but that's a five. That's a five, a level five, like in the middle? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll read the number four level five then. Um, so this average level is level five. To stay in touch with feelings, they internalize everything, taking everything personally and taking everything personally, but become self-absorbed, an introverted, moody, and hypersensitive, shy and self-conscious, unable to be spontaneous or to get out of themselves, stay withdrawn to protect their self-image, and to buy time to sort out their feelings. Um, See, these don't say, sound that's average. Not me right now. Yeah, that's not me right now. They sound awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, a four. Yeah. I don't think we should look at these levels. They're all very depressing. I think this is, yeah, this is making me sound sad. Yeah. Let's go into Let's compatibility. Sad. Not sound sad. It's making me feel sad. Yeah. Let's do compatibility. Um, I don't have a partner, so I don't have anyone to compare my compatibility to, so I didn't look at that at all. <laughs> um, I did for a second. It's kind of, it's going to be sad. Gonna oh, no. en- Going to end on a, I mean, it's got its goods and its bads, like all of this does. Goods and bads. Who says that? <laughs> so... <laughs> This episode has been great. Very scientific. You know why? It's, because you're type five and you're into science. The goods and the bads. Okay, <laughs> so I had my boyfriend take this, and he was also a five, which I was actually shocked about because I didn't think we would both be fives. Um, that wasn't supposed to be offensive. It kind of sounded like it, but so fives give a great deal of personal and emotional space to each other that first sentence right there i mean we pretty much i mean we're obviously living together so we're around each other all the time but he works all day and so i have my own emotional space and if he needs his own emotional space like we just don't talk and it doesn't i don't know if it bothers him but it doesn't bother me i mean I like physically being with someone and not having to say anything. Yeah. And I think that helps with emotional space. I mean, it gives you time to reflect while also still being with someone. Um, It said it may take weeks or even months before they see the inside of each other's homes. That wasn't true. I started sleeping over almost immediately. So did you and cut them up? go over this these results or no 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 are you going to he's gonna listen to this podcast oh that's true i forgot you listen <laughs> actually hey shout out hey. to come up hey. this is uh he's usually the first one who listens too yeah hey girl hey so yeah um where was i Oh, they value tactfulness and would never knowingly put people on the spot for personal information i don't know what that has to do with relationship but we totally do that so that's wrong um distance respect courtesy good boundary few demands all of this is wrong um i demand a lot so well maybe this is you um did you look at compatibility between a four and a five no since you track high on a four you keep going over this and i'll pull that up okay um fives can be curious about each other in their private lives i'm nosy yes but there is a great deal of that's not a word reticence is that a word might be to take the initiative where personal matters are at stake private life if i knew what that word meant this would be a lot easier to decipher could you spell Um, it for me R E T I C E N C E. I don't nope. know. Nope. Not a word? Okay. I don't know what it means. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I thought you were looking it, it up. If I, oh, yeah, I can look it up. <laughs> I can I'll use just, my skills. I'll just keep going. So okay, the, main, going. the main problem for most double five pairs is too much emotional distance and reticence they're using it again reticence to express 
The definition Definitely. literally says the quality of being whatever the first word is without it being. Redis? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? So, okay, well, then similar words are reserve, introversion, and restraint. So, we'll use just, restraint. They just tried to use a big word. I'll use We're restraint because so that sounds right. Okay. So, the main problem for most double five pairs is too much emotional distance and restraint to express oneself, which can erode intimacy. So, that tracks because there will be times when. I mean, there are times daily when we don't know what's going on in each other's lives. Like, he is at work all day, I am at work and home all day, and we have no I- idea what each other did or are doing, unless it's something big. So, like, he got a promotion or is in the process of, I know about that. Everything else, no idea what's going on. And you both Zero. willingly don't tell each other about days or ask about your days or you're just not interested (laughs) willingly he gets home we eat dinner watch our tv show he goes to bed what's there to talk about i mean i try i try to ask questions really like how was your day good and if he were to ask you how your day was would you also just respond like good yeah I would probably talk about what happened. If nothing happened, obviously, I wouldn't say anything, but Mm -hmm. I'm usually dramatic, so something probably could happen or did happen. I'm just overblowing it, but yeah, I'll Mm -hmm. talk about it. But he doesn't ask, so we just keep our mouths shut. So it says that that can erode intimacy. I mean, communication is key, and we have shit communication. Yeah. But I don't think it's on purpose. I think that's just how we are. Because you're both the same personality. Mm-hmm. And that makes a lot of sense. So they each become too private and run the risk of becoming isolated from each other. They can deteriorate into a professional association connected by respect for the other's competency and other positive qualities, but any emotional connection may eventually get lost. That's rough. Um, but it sounds coming, a lot sadder than it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about y'all's relationship. I'm saying like in general, like the five and the five, you both having that same personality where you're both like introverted and you're both like feeling where you're not trying to like go out of your way to have that communication. And then the other person is also doing that. Um, like I could see like, if that's how you like to have things received back to like, you don't want that, then that would work out if you're both that way. But like, if you're seeking that sort of like emotional intimacy and you're not getting it like as a five or whatever, the other number, like I could see that becoming a problem. Yeah. I mean, emotional, emotional, you need emotional, whatever the word was intimacy to be dating someone. I mean, that's, that's a part of it. And I do think that us both being fives has definitely hurt that more than it would in another situation because both of us need someone to pull the trigger. So it's like, Oh, I don't, I don't think about asking those questions or saying those things. I just expect someone to blurt them out to me. Right. Like I feel terrible because I don't think about asking people how they're doing but I do want you to tell me but I'm not going to ask you yeah you you want them to do it on their own yeah where being that you're partnered with somebody with the same personality potentially the exact same thing is going on in their head where they're also they want you to tell them but they're not going to ask they want you to just do it so then neither of us think that we should do it because no one's asking. <laughs> and then you're just sitting around in silence, not yep. communicating. Yep. Hey, let's and <laughs> that's um, like the worst trait ever too, because I could go months without talking to people because I'm not the type of person who makes the first move. And it's not yeah. that I don't care. It's just, I do not think about it. Yeah. You just need that little push. 
Yeah. And it's like, people are always coming to me like, hi, how are you? How are you doing? And it's like, I don't care about small talk. Let's talk about real shit. But then if you don't yeah. start out with that, how are you doing? Like, how does the conversation start? You know? So yeah. then I just don't start it. Yeah. I can't, I cannot make small talk. Like Mm-mm. I need a specific topic for us to discuss, um, to, to go about the day. Like I'm not, Hey, how's it going? You know, how was your day? Like I'm, I'm going to find out about your day, like in a different way. I might say like, this happened to me today. What happened to you? Or did you do such and such today? But I can't just yeah. be like, Oh, how's it going? Yeah. Like I need a, I need a topic. Like, give me the tea. Um, yeah. Well, let me read this last part because it explains a lot of what we do too. So, um, two fives must learn quickly how to balance the independence they require with the degree of intimacy and personal sharing and self self disclosure required to establish a meaningful relationship. We obviously quickly did not learn that because it's been 11 years. So, um, it says that if you found someone who with your comfortable, they can become quickly attached, which we became quickly attached. So I don't, I think that's like a lot of it because we felt comfortable with each other very mm-hmm. quickly, but also long silences and breaks are punctuated by intense bursts of communication. So there will be some days where we're hanging out and we're just talking for like an hour straight. Yeah just about a bunch of random shit yeah but like the day-to-day doesn't happen because it's that lack like nobody wants to have small talk right and that i think that it sounds like it's that strong like that headstrongness from that five personality in both of you that's causing that yeah and like i think maybe from an outside perspective like if someone else is listening to this it might sound like you guys should sit around not talking but that's not the case at all it's just you're not hey how was your day and you can also communicate without using words like you said you like to have like that you know like just being with somebody even without talking like is a comforting thing where you have that emotional space yeah we try and find like tv shows that we both want to watch together and which is also few and far between because we don't like the same stuff Um, just because you don't like anything (laughs) well that's true (laughs) yeah but if we find something i think that also helps get kind of a discussion going while we're watching and stuff and Mm -hmm. i don't know it's fine we're fine this is running long (laughs) no i oh my god i wasn't trying to say it wasn't fine did you think that's what i was saying okay all right no i just think this is very kind of Debbie Downer-ish. It's because it's a test and they're trying to put you in a box. Don't let them put you in a box. <laughs> That's all it uh, is. So don't don't Debbie Down it. Um, hit us up on Twitter and tell us what number you are if you go take this test at the Enneagram Institute.com um, and report back to us on Twitter. And yeah, tell, us, tell us if, especially if you're like a five or a four, we want to know if you mesh with us yeah definitely if you're our numbers like do you agree or disagree with like the same things that we agree and disagree with about like do we have the same weird personalities and tell us your personality if you're a three because i want to know if we also mesh because we're the complete opposites yeah because we scored opposite because tests um but yeah this episode was a lot different because it wasn't as like humor based and more like trying to go off of something, which is not something we've done before. And so, I mean, for myself personally, I was a little more uncomfortable coming into this. Um, I'm just sad. Why? (laughs) I'm going to go lay down and uh, mentally recoup myself after this one. Okay. I'll send you a text (laughs) of somebody patting you on the back with a broom. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Sounds good. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.